Hello, I'm Rich Lund, and this is part of the Raising Monarchs series, and thank you for tuning in and trying to help out the monarch butterflies. Now, I've had multiple times questions asked about repairing a chrysalis. If you've checked out my other videos, you understand that if I'm moving through a good number of caterpillars and chrysalides all in a similar container, there can be a crowding issue sometimes when they're up at the top. If that should happen, you might want to take the chrysalides off of where they've hung themselves and transfer them onto, some people use cork boards by pinning the silk, some do what I do, wad up the silk and use that to hang them from cords, I use yarn, and hang them from that wadded up silk with like a little paper clip, some type of clasp. If you're doing that, and if you're removing the chrysalide from the top of the container, Sometimes it can occur where the silk actually rips off at the stem and you don't have that silk to wad up and clasp with something or stick a pin through it. What do you do then? Other times people have told me that the chrysalis just didn't get woven into the silk correctly. The caterpillar didn't produce enough silk to make it a secure chrysalis hanging and the chrysalis has fallen. Sometimes it falls and it, it breaks open. Other times it's fallen and there's been cushion underneath, like grass or something, that'll help protect it. But still, it's not hanging anymore. If that happens, if the chrysalis isn't hanging, that butterfly is not going to make it. Part of the life cycle, as it emerges, the adult monarch needs to hang from that chrysalis or something else in order to let the wings unfold, in order to have the fluids that are in the abdomen pump into the veins and into the wings so that way it can have those wings dry in a nice manner and it can then fly away. If any of that process is interrupted, if the wings don't unfold correctly and if it's not hanging upside down to allow that to happen, the monarch is not likely to ever be able to fly. So it's really important if you have, for whatever reason, a chrysalis that doesn't have that silk and is not able to hang on its own, what can you do to repair it? So I thought it'd be important to make this video before any of us have this happen again. I've described in some of the comments what I do, but I actually wanted to make a video and show you what the steps are. If you checked out the last video where I showed you how to tell the sex of a monarch butterfly from just looking at the chrysalis, then you might be familiar with this one. Found this guy at the Detroit Zoo when he was a caterpillar, and then two days later he formed his chrysalis inside of my Dippin' Dots container. Now I could just hang this container from somewhere and that monarch would be just fine. But I'm going to use this one as an example as to how I can repair the chrysalis if it's damaged. I'm not going to actually damage the organism inside that chrysalis, but we are going to show you the method using this one as to how I can attach it to something else that I can hang the chrysalis from. Keep in mind, I wouldn't do this if I thought there was any risk to the monarch, but I've done this a number of times out of necessity and I've never had any problems with this method. In fact, the first idea I had turned out to be one that worked very well. So let's check it out. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen me do this before. I'm just pulling kind of steadily at the base of the stem and my tweezers are holding on to the silk when I do this. Now this is how I normally would remove it and if you just give a constant pull, that silk comes off pretty easily. Now this silk is what I would normally then wad up and I'd use that to clasp on to a cord. Here I'm gonna cut it off though. Now all I have left is that black stem. Now that black stem is a little bit hollow so if that breaks I do believe your chrysalis is going to be susceptible to infection and it's probably a goner. However if that were to happen you need to repair it you can just lay it on its side while you set up your materials and then find a place where you can set it where you're not worried about any glue getting on there. Take some wadded up folded paper towel and you need to put it underneath the black stem so that way the stem is flush with the paper towel but the green chrysalis isn't necessarily on the paper towel. Once you have that in place, our goal is to take a glue that is an expansive glue. Now I'm not trying to do any type of product placement here but there's a certain primate glue that I found works very nice for this. It expands as it dries. We want just a dab of it just enough to cover that black stem but not get a lot on the chrysalis. If some gets on the chrysalis that's happened to me before and it hasn't caused me any problems but we don't want to like over cake that chrysalis with the glue. 
If you need to, you might need to push it in a little bit closer to the glue. I've had to do that a few times. And I've even used a popsicle stick to sometimes dab the glue a little bit closer to where I wanted to get it, where it was intended to go. And so I might need to do that a little bit, might need to add a little bit more glue. And again, the goal is to get that black stem submerged in the wet glue. Once the glue completely covers the stem, well, then you just need to wait for it to dry. And out of scientific curiosity, let's actually use this timer and we'll see how long it takes. So let's go ahead and start the timer and we'll see how long this takes. About 26 minutes later, we can already start to see some bubbling inside of the glue. That's how this glue expands as it dries. Bubbles form within it as it's starting to dry, which puffs out the glue. But right now it's still moist and wet, still flexible. An hour and a half later, and now we have some very stiff, very dried glue. If I pull on it or tug on it, which I wouldn't want to do too hard with this chrysalis, I can see that it's not flexing at all. In fact, I can hold the paper towel completely horizontal, and the chrysalis is not moving or bending in that glue. So I know it's nice and firm. So now we can cut out the swatch of our paper towel that we want to use. And once we have that, we'll be able to clasp that or pin it to any board that we wanted to. And now you have a completely repaired chrysalis. So there you go. Now you have a repaired chrysalis, nice and secure, and it's on paper towel. You could use this to either pin it to some board, or you could use my clasps with the method that I'm doing. So I hope that helps you out. If this did give you that helping hand, please give it a thumbs up. It actually does help get these videos out to more people and get more exposure for them to help out the cause. Also, if you haven't checked it out yet, got some awesome chromatography butterflies that you can make on the latest Indie Labs. So if you give that a check, you could learn some science and get some awesome summer decorations too. It's a great way to help get your kids even more involved and enthused to do this project. Whether it be raising the monarchs or learning some cool science, I hope that you check this out this summer, and I hope that you have really good luck with your Monarchs. Please subscribe to the channel and stick with us all summer. We've got plenty more Raising Monarchs videos coming out, good information there, and a lot of other little treats along the way, too. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks a lot.